Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakudash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. And double honor to the apostles and the other bishops of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amon Gabar, and I'm back with another quick lesson, Lord Willis Edifying, straight to the point. And this video pretty much, um, it's like a testimonial video of a, a dream that I had last night. Woke up this morning, I remembered it. You know, a lot of times, sometimes them dreams be escaping you. But this one I remembered, and I remember, I remember it very clearly, so Lord as well, I can um, describe it to the best of my ability. And also, too, what you see on the screen is from the YouTube. It's on YouTube, and this is the the video concept of that movie that was supposed to come out, like, what, 10 years ago or something like that, called The Gray State. So I just stopped it here at this particular scene because this is, this is what I've seen in the dream. So what happened was... It was pretty it was pretty brief. It was a brief it was a brief dream. So what happened was is that it was martial law, Jacob's trouble, and there were people bugging out, tripping, and going crazy on the streets. And like you see the FEMA on the screen, that was surrounding everybody. So you had troops literally surrounding everybody. So nobody could and it was a it was a lot of troops and the way the circumference of how much of, of, of how they were surrounding the people was very wide. So it was like it was almost a fence of FEMA troops so that people couldn't get out. Right. And they had on all of that. Exactly what you see right there is what they had on. And the people that was within this surrounding army of uh, FEMA, FEMA troops, I was there. And there were people there. Everybody was bugging out, going crazy. And I noticed it was mostly women. It was mostly a lot of women that were there bugging out. And they were dressed... Uh, they were dressed humbly, I guess you could say. Like, you know, because of the fashion. All that thing was gone. All the fashion of the world perished. So they all had on, you know, like some, some dingy head wraps. You know, some dirty clothes. And just looking desperate. So... The, uh, it was a food truck that came in, a white van, a white truck that came in with food to give people. But the food truck was rationing food because it was only a certain amount of food boxes that they were giving out. So in my dream, I knew they were rationing food. So when the truck pulled up, everybody ran to that truck and grabbing. It was like survival of the fittest, scrambling to get what they can get. But I walked I walked towards another small truck. It was like a little pickup truck, like a little um pickup truck and there was food in the back of this little pickup truck. And I remember grabbing I had a box in my hand. I'm not even sure where I got that box from. But I know I had a box in my right in my right hand, my right arm, and then I walked towards the pickup truck that nobody else really noticed but me. And I remember grabbing, there was some fruits in the back. I think it was like pears, like some pears or whatever. So I grabbed four of them. And I know I could have grabbed more, but for whatever reason, I only grabbed four, four of these pears. And when I grabbed them, you know, to get my, my, my portion or whatever, which I only grabbed four, which I could really, I could have took the whole thing, but I didn't. But that's when people started, um coming over to that side like women started coming over to that side that's when I know that's how I noticed that they were looking desperate and dingy and beat up because they ran over to that side so I seen them clearly and then they started trying to get whatever food was in that little white pickup truck and and then that's when I noticed like what you see on the screen that there was troops everywhere you know just like that surrounding everybody but I know in a dream that I was cool, calm, and collective, just walking, going about my way, going about my business. And everybody was bugging out, especially when the food truck came 
everybody started wilding out, running towards the food truck. And it kind of reminded me of um, how they explained the situation that went down during Hurricane Katrina when they were giving out the waters from them vans and them trucks and people were just scrambling, looking desperate, grabbing whatever they can get. It reminded me of that scenario. But I just know in the dream, I was good. I was like, I wasn't wilding out. I wasn't bugging. I wasn't tripping. Like the troops didn't phase me. The people losing their mind didn't phase me. I casually just went over and grabbed four of these different, um, four, four um, pears, four fruits, and walked away. And that was pretty much it. That's all I could really remember. And then I woke up. And that's pretty much the dream, you know, and I know that it was martial law, it was Jacob's trouble, it was food rationing going on, people desperate for food, and I know I know all of that, I know all of that, and I remember very clearly how that went down, and there's a spirit, because prior to this, prior to this dream, or last night, you know, my woman had a dream also too, pretty much of martial law. All right, Jacob's trouble, EMP attacks, darkness, and just all hell broke loose. You know, all hell broke loose in that dream or vision, and we in that time. You know, we in that time. There is gonna be desperation. You know, they say fear is the greatest, one of the greatest motivators. So it's going to be lights out, it's going to be blackouts, it's going to be darkness, it's going to be people out here looting, you know, and then only those that are stable minded are going to be protected, you know, those that are of your how about Shimei Asha will be protected, wisdom and knowledge, which I got a few precepts and these are pretty much precepts that we all already know, and repetition is key, and these, these scriptures what gives us hope in these dark times to come because we're gonna need it. You know, when you see these FEMA troops in your neighborhoods surrounding your Walmarts and different food places because people are losing their mind, looting, robbing, stealing, killing just for the last orange, you know, the last banana, the last pack of cashews and different, la you know, food items, scarcity. You know, so the, the, the model is order out of chaos, order out of chaos. At the end of the day, you know, these devils want chaos to pursue. They want it. They, they need it to happen so that they could come with the solution. Hegelian dialectic, you know, so that they could come with the solution and then the people will gladly accept the solution because in a dream, people were very desperate. You know, they were desperate for, you know, Food. They were desperate for just to get by, you know. And and it's gonna get to that point. It is gonna get to the point, man. You know, it's gonna be bad. Chaos in the streets. People killing one another. The troops coming in. You know. So Jacob's trouble is gonna happen. Jacob's trouble most definitely will happen. I'm just reading something real quick because you know she had sent me the dream. You know, pretty much yeah, it was EMP attack. You know, gunshots. You know, all hell broke loose. But nonetheless, man, the elect will be stable, stable minded and stable bodied when that time comes. So Without further ado, let me um get a few precepts and that'll pretty much be it. Book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 5. It says, For thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man do to travail with the child, Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? Because, like I said, I've noticed mostly women. I really, I can't recall seeing men like that. Besides the troops. You know, even though they, you could tell they were 
masculine figures because they look like what you see on the screen. I mean, I, I, I highly doubt those are women in those costumes on the screen, but that's what these troops look like. And it was mostly women looking at, they pretty much had on lamentation or lamenting type of clothing, for lack of a better term. You know, they were in a state of mourning, desperate. You know? So, scripture says, Ask you now and see whether a man do travail with a child. Do men travail with a child? No, they don't. Wherefore, in other words, why do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. paleness. So why am I seeing men in this type of distress, like a, like a woman in distress? Hands on their loins, stomach on them, you know, all over their, on their stomach, through pain, hunger pains, different pains. Why am, why am I seeing this? Why, what am I witnessing here? What, do, what, what the prophet Jeremiah is witnessing is the great day of, of Jacob's trouble. It says, alas, for that day is great. It's going to be a great day, you know. I mean, the word great alone can't magnify how great it's going to be. You're just reading it, don't even... You know, you just got to put yourself in that scenario, in the picture, like, you know, don't just read it like words on a book, but actually think about how bad it's going to get out here and how much we need Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai and his protection when that time comes, because it's going to be a great day. And I know, brothers, man, when, when that time comes, we're going to be cool, calm, and collective, bro. Like, no fear. You know, it sounds sound more easier said than done, but realistically speaking, you know, the Lord is going to keep brothers in a, in a certain mind frame. The spirit of the Lord is going to keep brothers in a certain mind frame of security when that time comes. And that's that's why scriptures like, you know, um, a man being more precious than fine gold. That's why those scriptures are going to come to life, because brothers are going to be stable. While everybody's bugging out, looking scared and confused and following the crowd, there's going to be certain men that are going to go to, pretty much go their own way, so to speak, and then go where the spirit tell them to go. And people are going to see that. You know, people are going to see that. They're going to witness that. And they're going to know something about you, you know, is illuminating off of you, that, 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 that aura, that wisdom. You know, like the scriptures say, wisdom maketh a man face to shine. So... How much more in a time when wisdom, the wisdom of this world is blotted out, confusion, darkness is covering this earth and people don't know what to do. But that's when the wisdom is going to shine like crazy because th there's nothing else there. You know, the wisdom that people thought they knew, them, the, all the know-it-alls ain't going to be know-it-alls anymore. But something about you is going to glow, illuminate. And that's the spirit of your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai that these people are going to see on you. I'm talking about the brothers and they're going to see that. Men are going to see it. And try to get down and, and be a, be part of your, you know, under you and all that, man. But the Lord is going to reject a lot of people because, like the scriptures say, I got a, a couple came to mind. Isaiah 55th chapter comes to mind. Isaiah 55 and 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So, Seek Yahweh Hashem Yahshua while he may be found, because that goes to tell you that there's gonna be a time when he's not gonna be be able to be found. And how do you find Yahweh Hashem Yahshua? There's only one way: the prophets. The prophets are the ones that are ushering in and declaring Yahweh Hashem Yahshua, declaring his words, declaring his prophecies, declaring his truth. That's what the prophets are doing. But the time is gonna come where the prophets ain't gonna be on the highways and byways and hedges and doing YouTube videos. You know, during the weeks and, and, and lives and premieres and, and teaching and talking and telling people things. The Lord is going to withdraw this precious word in the time of calamity. He's going to do that. You know, and those who got it, got it. And those who don't, don't. And it is what it is. You know, so seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. While he is near. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. Because this is what it's all about. This is the grace. The Lord is allowing this grace period to continue to allow those that are going to return to return. And that's the only way you'll be granted salvation is to turn it back to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, believing on him, calling upon him names. It says, and he will have mercy. You see, it says, let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. 
So the only way to obtain mercy is to return to the Lord. And we are, we are we have returned to the Lord. We're here. We're doing what we were called to do. And the, the, the main objective is to continue to do what we were called to do. You know, give diligence to make thy calling and election sure. You know, this it ain't over until it's over. You know, even when all hell break loose, it ain't over. It's over when the miss was a shot. And Yahweh Shah come back and to deliver his elect. That's when it's over. You know? So it says, and he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. So the Lord will abundantly pardon. Alright, um, those that have mercy um that he show mercy to. Let me read down to verse. Actually, I can read on because I want to get for verse 10 and verse 11. It says, verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, save the Lord. For as the heavens for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So the Lord's word do not go out void. The prophecies do not go out void. The word is going out, just like the rain come down and water the seed and give seed to the sower, just like the snow come down, just like everything that comes down and it, it, it has a purpose, so does the words of the Lord have a purpose. And it is going to accomplish that which it was set out to do. All right. And people are going to see these prophecies come to pass, come to fruition, come, you know, bud and, and, and actually become what the prophets have been saying is going to become. Because the prophets are just saying what Yahweh Shah is saying, what Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah is saying. The, the testimony and the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Revelation 19 and 10 You know, so These things are going to happen You know, these things are going to happen And And Hold on These things are going to happen Hold on, let me you know, find a, another screen I don't want to play any of this Because you already know You know Dutty E go down You know, you know how we get down Chaos, you know, chaotic scene right there. Oh, oh, this is a good scene. She went in the store, and they had none. What I say? Out of stock. Everything out of stock. You know. So um. So what was I saying? Um. Yeah, the words are gonna come to pass, and like, oh, this is a perfect um clip. Because in the, in the dream, it was food rationing. It was a lack of food. The troops had to come in and give people food. You know, the troops came in and gave, gave people food, and people were fighting over food, and everybody targeted this one truck. You know, not knowing. Well, I swear, had me know that there was um some food in this little pickup truck. And now, you know, I thought about it too. Like four also represents mercy, and I pray that Yahweh by Shemuel Shai do show mercy. You know, unto me, you know, because thinking about just grabbing four, I don't know what was in the box, but grabbing four, you know, that's not even enough for myself, let alone my household, you know, so four is mercy, and hey, the scriptures say this, let me go to um, Isaiah 65, and I'm, I'm going to finish up in, in, um, in Jeremiah 30 also. This is Isaiah 65 and verse 12. Not fair, I start up. Um, start down. 13, straight to the point. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Power Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be shamed. So the, we know that the Lord's servants, the servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh are going to eat. And I think it's the other translation where it says in the time. Oh, that's in um, Job. Job 5. I'm going to get that too, Lord willing. 
It says, Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but he shall cry for sorrow of heart and hell for vexation of spirit. And that time, like you see her face, that's how people gonna be looking when they walk up in them stores and if they even allowed to go into them stores. You know, not everything is off the shelf. People ain't got it. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful. You know why? Because the Lord, we we have confidence, we trust in the Lord that we're gonna rejoice. Lord, when we be found the worthy servants, the elect, the elect are going to eat. And not going to be hungry. The elect are going to drink. They ain't going to be thirsty. The elect is going to rejoice. They ain't going to be ashamed. But everybody else is going, what? It says, sing, for, um, the elect is going to sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and howl for vexation of spirit. So these people are going to be going out here. They're going to be done. Mosai ain't playing. His son ain't playing. The prophets ain't playing. The angels ain't playing. They ready to get busy. You know, Esau ain't playing because the Lord put the spirit on this devil to do what he gonna do. You know, so only only people playing is two thirds. Two thirds are the only ones that are playing. This is Job five and nineteen. Let me read it. It says. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yeah, in seven, this shall no evil touch thee. The sixth trouble represents the calamity. When all hell break loose, Jacob's trouble. It's the famine, the plagues, the pestilence. When SHTF, power outages. When all hell break loose. That's, you know, the Egyptian against the Egyptian. With swords in the hand. Neighbors invading one another. Cannibalism. That's all part of the sixth trouble. The seventh is when the missiles are shot. That's why it says no evil shall touch thee. That's Psalms 91. It says in famine, he shall redeem thee from death. So in a, fam in a famine, brothers are going to be taken care of, all right, and, and sisters, you know, women that are faithful in this truth, the husband, the wives that are husbands and all that are going to be taken care of, the children, everybody's going to be taken care of in that time. It says, and in the war, and in war from the power of the sword, thou shalt be hid from the scourges of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth, so... What kind of spirit you have to have on you to laugh when people can't eat? People fighting over food trucks and, and rationings and, and guess what? They gonna let it happen. These these soldiers, these troops, they gonna let it happen. You know, they gonna let it happen. They gonna let watch people kill each other and destroy each other and then lock you up and beat you up and you know have their way with these people. Scripture say in apocrypha they gonna be uh, not sparing and spoiling those that fear the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Um, the scripture I quoted says. Let me see if it's in the NLT. I know it says it in the NLT, but I, let me see if it's Joel 5. Joel 5 and... Let me see. Is it? Let me go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 65 Bear with me one moment Damn what scriptures it says Says so something like you have more than enough, you should have more than enough. Just let me type in satisfied. Oh, you know it could be in the book of Psalms. Hold on. Yup. Psalms 37 and 19. Why do y'all bless me? Psalms 37 and 19, it says, I'll start at 18. It said, matter of fact, I can start with some more. Verse 17, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. Verse 19, it says, they shall not be ashamed in evil time. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. 
Let's read it over in the NLT, verse 19. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Hard times is coming. All right, hard times is coming to this world as we know it. But the elect will be preserved from said perils. Again, the elect will be preserved from these said perils that's coming to this earth. So they will not be disgraced in hard times. And Esau is purposely making it to where times will get hard. The Most High is doing it. All right, we don't credit Esau up here. We credit Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and we are fully aware of the tools, the vessels, and the instruments that he used to accomplish his agenda, which Esau happens so happen to be one of those tools that the Lord is using. Like the scriptures say that, and also in Psalms, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. All right, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. Scriptures also call him the hammer of the earth. Okay. So it says they will not be disgraced in hard times. Hard times is coming. You know, was it was a slogan? You will own nothing and be happy. You know, remember they got a thing that was de uh, they dealing with called the UBI, Universal Basic Income, where which we, you know we could clearly see that it's going to be tied into your social credit score and pretty much people going to be getting allowances, credit allowances, and ultimately all this is leading. To, the, to this MOTB system that's being set up, all right? You got the CBDC, all right, which stands for Central Bank Digital Currencies, which is the forerunner for the MOTB, which is the mark, all right? We're pursuing the Revelation 13, verse 16 on down, the karagma that's going to be implanted in people, all right, in these wicked people that's going to trust in Egypt. So this digital system that's approaching fastly, is all a forerunner for the end goal for these elites. You know what I'm saying? So, like we've been warning from the apostles on down, when they implement that C hip, do not take it. All right, trust in the Lord. Do not take it. Because one thing that's guaranteed if you take it is your ass is going to get burnt by ICBM missiles. You're going to die. Pursuing the Revelation 14 and 9. All right? If you don't take it, the Lord is going to keep you from the hour of temptation. You don't take it. You, be part of the elect, Lord's will, man, you know? So, evil times is coming. And the elect, they will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, this is the point. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. So, in famine, the elect is going to have more than enough. The Lord is going to show mercy to the elect in the time of famine. Alright? The Lord is going to show mercy to his elect in that time of famine. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know, those who panic says die first. Uh, that's how Esau would be out here looking. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, that was a dream that I had. You know, like I said prior to that, you know, my woman had a Jacob's Trouble dream. And the Lord pretty much, you know, not pretty much, but he was with us and protected us in that dream. You know, so Lord willing, we'd be part of the elect. We would be protected when shit hit the fan, when the lights go out, people, people going crazy, people killing each other for food, for the lack of bread, for, you know, fear. And then Esau unleashed these pestilence that's going to be smiting people. The elect is going to be preserved, you know, so just keep praying and hoping that you're part of the elect and do what the elect would do, you know, do what the elect would do. Scripture said that in Peter, knowing that all these things are going to be dissolved, what man and person are you to be? What kind of person would the elect be in these times? They're going to be doing what the elect would do. So anyway, I'm going to end it here. <clears throat> I'm going to end it here. I hope and pray. To Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. And this was an edifying lesson to the elect of the nation of Israel. And like the scriptures say in um, Romans 13 and 11, our salvation is nearer than when we believed. So our salvation is near, man. All hell is about to break loose, and the Lord is going to deliver his elect from said peril. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom to the elect. Shalom.